So just to introduce myself, my name is Jennifer Natale. I'm one of the librarians here at Belk Library. And um, today we're gonna talk about images and using um, images and video properly. It's a common question that's come up from students um, who are trying to do projects. And it's also come up from professors and faculty members who want to help their students to um, use images properly and are concerned about projects that they get in grading and that kind of thing with images that may not have been used properly. So I'm going to cover a number of things and share a lot of resources that I have for you and hopefully make this process just a little bit less intimidating. So I'm sharing my screen with you now. So this is uh, who I am. Um, my contact information, feel free to um, contact me afterwards if you have any questions, that kind of thing. We want to make sure um, that you, you know, learn about um, images and proper citation. And this is just something that I personally got interested in because I was doing my own work and doing presentations at conferences and things like that and was not really comfortable with the process myself. So I wanted to really learn how to use images properly and find some great resources for images. So um, that is what I have done, and um, that's given me the opportunity to find some great sources to share with you today. So I'd like to preface this by saying I'm not a copyright expert. So some of the conversation that comes up with images is about copyright, and I'm not a copyright expert or a lawyer, um, and I uh, just want to preface that. So I can't give you legal advice, but I want to really try to clear up some of the basics. Oftentimes when we talk about images and we're using them here at the university, we think they're fair use. So that comes up quite a bit. So I can use things, we're in an educational environment, it's fair use. Um, but we wanna be really thoughtful about how we're using images and other resources like that and give credit to those who created um, those resources. Hold on one second. Great. Um, so we want to make sure we give credit to people who have um, created these items, and that's really important. And the other thing that we have to recognize is while we're using things within an educational environment, we're also um, creating things like videos for class projects, and we're posting them on YouTube in order to make them available. So when we do that, you know, we're putting them publicly out there. So let's learn the right way to do it that way. Um, we're doing it in the best possible way for now while we're in the academic environment, but also when you leave the academic environment and you're out presenting and putting things on the web that we're doing things um, properly. So that's just the opening here. So let's um, jump in and share some resources that I have for you. So one of the first things that I want you to really think about when you're creating um, a poster or a flyer or you know, you're using images in a presentation or even in a video is to really think about why you're using images and what you're trying to convey. So an image is really meant to enhance your message and the story that you're trying to tell. So sometimes when you look at presentations and things, there's some random image. Um, and you look at it and it's like, okay, there's an image there, but it doesn't have any connection to the content of what is there. And sometimes we see images that are really poor quality. They're fuzzy, they're not clear. So we can resolve all of that by using good quality resources and really thinking ahead of time before we create our projects. So I wanna show you um, an idea, it's called storyboarding. And it's something you can really think about, especially if you're creating a video project. So this is actually a resource called Canva, and I'm gonna share some more information. It's one of my new favorite tools. But this is an example of a free tool that you could use to um, create what's called a storyboard. So a storyboard is really an idea of sketching out your project before you put the whole thing together or actually start um, collecting your images and your video. Um, that way you really are thinking through um, what's going on. So here's one from Canva. I want to share an example with you. Here's something that someone was creating a video blog storyboard and they've really sketched out what content they're going to have. So how they're going to film the shot, 
um, how they're going to, um, what dialogue is going to be in each of those, et cetera. So um, that way you can really decide what the images are going to be um, as you go along. So this is an example for a video blog. And you can see again that their content is um, spaced out. They know what they're going to cover, what the dialogue is. Sometimes you have words that you want to overlay over the video project and you really map it out ahead of time. This is especially helpful for, um, for video, but really good for doing poster presentations as well. And the idea with this is to really think about the images and what they're going to convey. So what do I want my image to say? And then go seek out an image that works for you. Um, it's just the opposite of doing a research project, right? When we talk about research, we say to collect all your research and then do your research project. Well, with an image project, I think it's just the opposite, is we collect all our content and then we go to look for images that enhance our content. Our content. So, um, so that's just an example to really think about um, the ability to create a storyboard. So what this does for me, I create what I call a shopping list of what I want to do, um, what I want to seek out for images. But we're going to find free resources and not pay for them because there's a lot of um, images that you can pay for, but we don't really need to. So my colleague and I have put together some resources. Just here we go. So this is a resource that um, Hannah Hope, who's our Emerging Technologies Librarian and myself have put together. It's a number of um, technology resources for creating projects, things that are available in the library. We have a lot of technology that you can freely use in order to create projects. And one of the things that we've put together here is a list of places where you can find some great quality images. So these are sites that I use myself, um, that I um, look for and when I'm creating a presentation I'll go to these with my shopping list and try to find the images that work for my presentation. So commonly students in particular and I think all of us um, the easy thing to do is we go to Google right and we search and image searches come up and we see lots of things and it's super easy to just right click and say copy that image and paste it into my document. Um, but we don't know if we have legal permission to use that resource and we also tend to find that they're not the best quality. They're just being pulled off websites and stuff like that. So not the best option and not really the legally um, correct way to do that. So let me show you a few examples from this list that's on the right hand side here of some sources. So first I am going to start um, with Google because I think we utilize Google quite a bit. So if I open up a new web page and I want to search for um, an image, I might say that I want to search for an image of a library. And we're all very familiar with this. It comes up with a Google image search um, of all these different kinds of images. So what I want you to do is really look at the top bar here and click on images. So now we're going just into this Google image search. And typically this is where students are going as well, right? We're just quickly using um, images that come up in a Google search. But if you actually take an extra minute and go over to the right hand side, again, we're along the top here where it says tools, you'll notice the next search bar that comes up gives us the option for usage rights. If we click on that, you'll see that we have a number of options here. And this starts to get into what's called Creative Commons, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. But you can see that some of these images may be labeled with the ability to reuse them, and they can be modified. Um, they can be reused in modification, but only for non-commercial purposes, okay? Non-commercial reuse. For example, you can use any of those depending on what your needs are. So sometimes you may be doing something where you're using it for commercial use. Um, so you want to be really careful about that and make sure something has that permission. But if I choose just the general labeled for reuse, it's going to limit my image sites where I have permission where they can be used. It doesn't mean that I don't have to still credit the authors and the sites where I, where I got these images, but um, it does a better job of filtering and telling me what I can use. So 
If you just kind of scroll through quickly, this comes from Pexels. That's one of the sites that's suggested in our LibGuide. We're getting this from Wikimedia Commons. Um, so you'll see that they come from a variety of web resources where supposedly we have the option to reuse them. So if you want to choose your images through Google Image Search, um, do it this way, but then go to the original source. So for example, this first one is from Pexels. I would click on it and I would get more information here about it. And typically, if you'll see here, there's a visit the website and I would go directly to that website in order to get that, that image from that site directly. The reason I suggest this is because it gives you more information about that image. So for example, here on the right hand side, now I get the image information about how it can be used, who the author is, and when I'm citing this, which I'll show you again a little bit later, um, how you have to cite this in your paper, you have all the information. So if you choose a Google image search, um, follow through and go back to the original source of the image. Um, that way you can be sure that it just didn't get collected in the Google search, even though we limited, and maybe it's not available for reuse or something has changed. So that's my first suggestion, um, is if you're using Google image search. A couple of the others that are here, um, and let me show you an example of one that I had used um, in a presentation. So when I mentioned your image having um, a real meaning behind it, here's an example of an image that I used in a presentation for a job interview. Um, I was really wanting to capture people's attention. Um, I covered a bit of content prior to this slide, and I needed to really help people see that I was changing gears, and I really needed to um, change things up a little bit. So I put this image in here hoping it would really catch people's attention and I was really happy it did. Everybody kind of reacted to it and I re-engaged them and yet it had meaning. I was trying to reframe what I was talking about, hence the glasses, um, and move forward from that. So this was an image I really particularly looked for to portray a particular message. So the way that I go about doing this is I use different resources. This one happens to come from Flickr. So again, if you copy the link to this library guide, um, you can come back here and Flickr is one of the options. So Flickr is a wonderful site. If you are someone who likes photographs and you want to upload your own, you can make them available the way all of these other folks do. So I have a friend um, who used to, um, who is a photographer and he hosts his images here and he puts Creative Commons licenses on them so people know how they can utilize them and um, that's what a lot of these folks do. So these are really professional photographs in many cases and if I go in here and I search for something, say I want a puppy in my image search, there we go. Okay, you notice I didn't really have to sign up, I didn't have to create an account, but you certainly can. Sorry, I took an extra click. So typically it comes up and it shows you the photos. So in some regards, this is very similar to how a search comes up on Google Image Search, where we've got all of these different images, lots of cute puppies, makes our day. In Flickr, notice again that there's this option that says any license in the top left. And we can go here, and again, we have these options of what we want to choose based on how we want to use this image. So typically when I'm doing something in an academic environment, if I choose a Creative Commons, um, that's pretty much going to do um, what I need it to. I'm not using it for commercial purposes. For the most part, I'm not typically modifying an image. I just want to use those that I'm allowed to use. So if I limit to that, now I've come up with images that I have permissions that I can use. So if, again, I click on one of these, because I really love this cute puppy, um, it's going to give me information if I scroll down about the author. And again, I've got the website so I can link to this. And notice on the right hand side here, it says some rights reserved. If I click on that, it'll give me more information about how I can use this image. 
So here is some of that Creative Commons, that CC, Creative Commons license, about how um, I can use this material. So I really like Flickr because it gives me really good description about Creative Commons in, um, in language that, as they call, is human readable. Um, so it tells me what I'm free to do. I can share and co copy and redistribute this image. I can adapt this image um, under the following terms. So I have to give credit to the author. And if I'm going to put this out there, I need to have the same Creative Commons license. So that's a really good example. And let me bring you to the Creative Commons website. So here's Creative Commons and with, where I would really suggest you go to learn a little bit more about this. So many of us are creators today, whether it's videos or um, any projects that we're working on. I really would um, encourage you to actually put Creative Commons licenses on your projects as well. So if you go to the Creative Commons website and share your work, you'll notice that it gives you some options on how to choose um, a license and will help to educate you on the different licenses. And you can see here's some platforms that actually use it, Flickr being one of them. Um, so that's why Flickr is one of my favorite options is because it's really clear about what I can use and what I can't. So if I go back to that presentation that I showed you, one of the things that I did was toward the end of my project, I actually went through and gave credit. I linked to where all my images came from. So I created a citation for the different slides and told who the author was, the date of the image, the title of it, and then the link to it that, where it came from in Flickr. So that's a really good example in a video project of how you would um, give credit to those images and the authors who created them. Hold on one second. I have this wonderful uh, light that turns off if I don't move enough. Um, so that's a good example of how you might want to do that at the end of a presentation. You also want to do this on a poster presentation too. You want to give credit to the images and also the references. So in my presentation, I also referenced a number of scholarly resources. Again, um, you want to reference images and sources that you use. So those are some examples of that. I go back to our list here. Another one that I'd like to show you um, is Pixabay. And again, beautiful free images. I can search for a kitten. And again, I come up with lots of images of a kitten. Notice on this site that I also get sponsored images along the top. See how they all have this Shutterstock um, logo over the top of it? So those are all images that you'd have to pay for. So just be conscious of that. In some of these sites, there is content um, that you have to pay for. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. Um, in Pixabay, again, it's really nice. It's usually just along the top. So I know that I can look at the images that are down further. If I want to use this lovely, elegant cat in my, in my project, again, it's nice. It's giving me some creative commons information about how I can use this, who the author is. Um, often in some of these, the name isn't really a full name. It might be just a screen name, but that's okay. That is their screen name on this, um, on this website. So you can use that. Um, and then we can download it. So those are a couple of examples, and I hope you'll, again, utilize this um, resource that we put together um, and look at the list that are here. Some of them that are here, we even have um, App State's photo and videos, that there's a repository of those on campus that we can use if we're doing campus projects, and um, that's a good resource there. If you're looking for things like um, clip art versus photographs or um, some of these have a little bit more clip art. You can also see Creative Commons Search, which is not, it's getting better, but it's not perfect. And this is actually doing a search of a number of um, resources all at the same time. Um, and it's, it's okay. Um, but I have found that I like a few different go-to resources for websites and I bookmark them on my computer and I keep those and, and use those as my go-to. But this is another option, and again, it's getting better. I can say that I want something that can be used for commercial purposes or I want to modify, 
and it'll search all of these at once if I want to. So just another resource. Okay, so that is some of those um, resources and I talked about creativecommons.org, which I would really suggest that you look at. Um, I also want to do a quick reminder, I'm not covering this today, but music falls under the same, um, the same issue in that music needs to be credited. Um, if you go into something like YouTube, um, YouTube will allow you to put in music that they have um, made freely available because you don't want to use copyrighted music in the back of your video that you don't have permission to use. So again, there are a number of free sites and YouTube is a good one that um, if you upload to YouTube, you can use one of their um, resources for music and videos, the same thing. So just be really conscious of not using something unless it says it gives you permission to use it or modify it. So let me show you um, YouTube and just how to get to that. So what we're gonna do is actually go into um, YouTube if you have an account, which you do through the university, and you're gonna go to your creator, um, creator studio. So now this will get you into the videos that you've uploaded. And if you look at the left under the dashboard, there's a create link and there's an audio library. So here's that audio library that has um, free downloadable music that you can work with in your video. So um, you can use this, or again, there's some other sites on the web. I didn't want to get too far into this today. But another um, thing I want to really think about is when we use an image such as this one from Pixabay, we want to really um, think about the quality of the image. So when we go to download these, it'll typically give you some different sizes you can download it as. And this is a good way to make sure your images are really high quality when um, you put them into your posters and presentations. So these images tend to have higher resolution, especially if you download a larger file. It'll allow you to resize it and it will maintain um, a good quality of that image even when it's resized. So a tip for this is to really use something like Photoshop or again in the resource that we provided, um, there's something called GIMP. So Photoshop is available in the library if you don't have a copy of it yourself. Um, or you can use GIMP um, as a free resource that you can use to edit images. So use these tools to resize your images instead of just clicking and dragging them. Because sometimes when you do that inside of something like PowerPoint, um, it really distorts the image. And in that regard, be sure not to resize images in just one way. So if you take a square image and you only make it wider or longer, it's going to distort the image and it's going to really lower the quality of that when you use it in your projects. So be sure to use something like Photoshop or GIMP in order to um, resize your images if you need to. You can also use this if you need to crop an image um, and that would be a modification of that image. Um, so that's a good resource as well. Another thing that's in this guide is some um, tips about poster presentations. So if you have a poster, say you're going to a conference or uh, presenting your research here at the university and you're creating a poster, here are some tips that I've put together to really think about when you're creating a poster presentation. So it's not just the images, but thinking about um, how your image and how your entire poster comes across to your audience. Um, audience is a really important thing to consider for all of your projects. Who is this being presented to? What is the message? Um, thinking about themes like color um, and consistency in the kinds of images that you use. So here are some that talk about um, some visual appeal. Here's some, again, legally using images. Um, and creating poster presentations. So again, when you do this, you want to think about crediting the sources for your images and your scholarly sources that you may have used as well. So that's some um, great suggestions on poster presentations. And um, want to point you to some citation resources. This is another common question that we get in the library, is how do I actually cite an image in my project or in my resource? 
So we have a citation guide that covers um, three of the main citation resources, the MLA, APA, and Chicago. So you can find um, either through this guide or online how to cite properly when you um, are using an image. So if I go to APA references, for example, I know I've put an example in here, if you scroll down, of how to cite an image. Okay? So here's an example of how you might cite an image in um, APA style. So you want to make sure you either use a resource like this or something like the Purdue OWL for the citation style that you're using and make sure at the end of all of your projects you have a reference list and you give credit to um, all of those in the proper format. So I hope the citation guide will give you a little bit of help with using um, all of your different citation sources. And um, typically when you're doing the citations for an image, you're using them from the web. So they'll typically include a link, like the ones that I showed you. This is another example from Flickr. So typically you'll have that link that someone would be able to click on it and find where you got that image. You also wanna cite yourself. So if you do a video project where you take your own photographs and images, you wanna cite yourself too. You do that for two reasons. Number one, to give yourself um, credit, but also in an academic project, you wanna make sure that it's really clear that you did cite where that image came from. Um, there could be a question if there was no citation as to whether that image was um, from a site and you just didn't cite who the author was. So in your projects, make sure you list yourself um, as the author of an image um, if you use your own work. Last thing I want to show you again um, is another aspect of Canva. So Canva is um, a really fun tool and this is great if you are someone who's looking at creating some flyers and more promotional kind of materials um, and you're not a graphic designer like I'm not a graphic designer. Canva is again a free resource although there are some paid options in here if you want to pay for the use of, of an image. Um, and this will allow you to create all kinds of different posters and flyers. So when you go into Canva, create an account because it will save your um, creations as you do them. And notice you can do posters, flyers, um, social media. You can see that size at 800 pixels, um, which is a social media size, all kinds of different things, certificate, infographics. You can use any of these background images that, um, that people have made freely available again. So for example, Women's History Month is coming up um, next month in March, so we're having a book display. So I used um, the images that were here and just changed the text from what was here to what I wanted it to say. And this one you can actually see there's a watermark here that says Canva. This actually was an image that I had to pay for. I had to pay a dollar to use it, but I really liked it, so I was willing to pay a dollar. But for other images, for example, the Black History Month book display that I did, this was a free image. Um, again, this was all set up for me. I didn't have to be a graphic designer. I changed the content. I added a couple things um, that were easily freely available from the left-hand side. So I can create my design and pick um, my formats. Just notice as you're scrolling over the formats, it'll say if it's free or it'll have a dollar sign on it. So just um, be conscious of that if you wanna use the free resources. But this is one of my new favorite tools. I think it can really um, help you to create professional looking content um, in your posters and your flyers and things like that. Again, people have put together great um, text color and matching other things, very much more graphically designed than I know I have the ability to. So I hope you'll find that to be a good resource as well. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending some of your lunch time with me. Again, this will be recorded. I hope you'll go to some of the sites that I mentioned um, where we've collected the resources and made it easy for you to just link on them. Um, and uh, appreciate your feedback. Thanks.